You've got to tune to 90.3 FM, KEXP, and streaming all over the world at kxp.org. Just heard music from Beirut. It's the afternoon show. I'm Larry Rose, and I'm so excited to have Kristen Hirsch live in the KXP studios with us. Hello, Kristen. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming in. Sure. Um, you have a new album called Wyatt at Coyote Palace, and also playing tonight at the Triple Door here in Seattle and tomorrow night at Mississippi Studios in Portland. Want to start off with a couple songs for us? Sure. It's Kristen Hirsch, live on KEXP. Kristen Hirsch live on KEXP with a brand new song called Bright. It's from Wyatt at Coyote Palace. Uh, the brand new record, it's a two CD set. It has a book along with it um, and uh, just a very cool package. And uh, she's playing tonight at the Triple Door here in Seattle and tomorrow night at Mississippi Studios in Portland. And uh, and she's tuning her guitar. Her guitar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. You want yes. my guitar tune? It yes. just flew from the UK, so it oh right, you, hurt feelings. Yeah, it's mushy <laughs> and angry, <laughs> like me. Once she finishes tuning, she's going to play a song from uh, the last Throwing Muses record, Purgatory Paradise. A great record from 2013. Don't you know your stuff? I uh, I don't know. I, it, people give me paper papers <laughs> with all the information. I want people with papers. <laughs> <laughs> I would know my stuff then. <laughs>
live on KEXP. Wow. What a great song called Sunray Venus. That's from Purgatory Paradise. And that is a Throwing Muses song uh, from the last uh, great Throwing Muses record. And then we started off with Bright from the brand new album, Wyatt at Coyote Palace. Kristen, welcome to KEXP. Thank you so much. So happy to have you back here. Um, I wanted to ask you because you've got Throwing Muses, your solo work, and also 50 Foot Wave. When you're writing songs, how do you decide which, uh, which project the guitars decide. Oh, really? Would, yeah. Solo songs are written on my Collings acoustics, oh, throwing wow. music songs on my Strat or this Telecaster, and 50 Foot Wave songs on my Les Paul or my SG. Got it. My drummers tell me it's a flawed system, <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't come up with a better one or another one. <laughs> no, that sounds sounds like it works very well. And do you, when you think of the song, do you say, I'm going to grab this guitar, or is it... I have the guitar, so this is going to be a... You know, I don't think of songs. They just happen. I know that sounds lame. I hear them, and then I copy them down. And the first time I had evidence of this was when I I sustained a double concussion in a car accident. I started hearing it, but I think they were always there. Um, Sure, So I was treated for PTSD, and it revealed an alternate personality, which who who had been writing the songs all along. So, and I that's what I had always said. It's like there's absolutely nothing wrong with me except music, and and that's that's true. So now I am both the music and the person. Yeah, yeah. So I don't write songs anymore. So I'll I'll see what happens. This might be it. (laughs) Maybe I don't need to anymore. Well, I think I mean on the new album there are 24 new songs. On yeah, uh, I have plenty. <laughs> so I, I, I said my piece. <laughs> I, I hope there's many more. Um, I wanted to ask you about Wyatt at Coyote Palace. Uh, can you tell me about the title? Yeah, uh, I have three children who I just fall asleep in the studio. It's a very boring place, the studio, unless you're the musician. And whenever distorted guitar would come out of the speakers, they would just topple over. I think it's because I toured, you know, they toured in utero. Yeah, yeah. So they were right next to my aunt. Sure. They're, that's their lullaby is distorted guitar. <laughs> but then my son Wyatt would go wandering instead of sleeping. And um, he wandered into this abandoned apartment building behind my studio that people mm-hmm. call the Coyote Palace because coyotes moved in when the people left. And it is spooky and enchanting. Yeah. He would film it. I'd follow him around and you'd find follow the coyotes prints in the snow. It was amazing. Wow. And I thought when we would separate, I want my eyes to shine like his. I should be crossing a threshold too. When I enter the studio, be that turned on by the process. And I think I was, I just was articulating that. And then one day he said, no, no more. I'm never going back. And really, I was shattered. I yeah. was like, but you're my work ethic. <laughs> right, right. And my drummer from Throwing Muses, who's been my best friend since we were eight said, he had to encapsulate this as sensory input in order for it to become sensory output. And that's what you're saying. You want 
your work to have an outline. It, we are here as finite people, so the work has to be finite. And if you say you give it as a gift, you have to be prepared to walk away. And yeah. that's, I was unprepared for that. For me, the studio is a selfish endeavor. Sure. <laughs> I would have stayed there forever. And that's why it said, no more coyote but he was palace. Like, I'm done. Yeah. yeah, so I had to be done too. It was like a pencils down, Chris moment. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long did that? Did that process go on? Um, Four or five years. This wow. is how selfish I am. And I was living in a farmhouse up the street from the studio and getting tasered on the electric cattle fence every night on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely um, intense. And no, it sounds like it. But I'm so addicted to it that I needed Wyatt to tell me time to go. That's that's it. Yeah. When you yeah. Saw, um, I would be afraid of coyotes. Um, is, was there any fear of them? I I would hide in the studio and never come out. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're afraid of you. Are they? Okay. Like, yeah. Okay. And, I mean, we were in their house. So they sleep on the mattresses. I don't know that they use the silverware and stuff, but they sure. they live with posters on the much- wall. And I was in. I was just, just so intrigued. Yeah. They seem to be better at it than people. You know, people put the dumb posters up, and right. the coyotes made them beautiful. Nice. Cool. <laughs> Well, I would like to experience that someday, but um, it, it sounds like... Well, the, you... the roof caved in a week later, so you can't. But, uh, and it's a good thing Maya decided not to go in anymore. <laughs> this is how good a mother I am. <laughs> well, you came away with uh, a ton of great songs, and um, did you actually write more songs than even uh, were, appeared on the record? Yes, the there's there's an enormous backlog of material. Well, I'm not proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I love what I've heard. And there's a book that comes with the record as well. Um, so you, you've done this on the past, on the last Throwing Muses record and also your last solo record. Is that something that, um, wh- how did you decide to, to include a book? With I your... think we just don't value CDs. I don't. Uh-huh. I think we value vinyl, but it's still a little presumptuous to give someone vinyl and say, here, adopt my soundtrack. It's like saying adopt my religion. Sure. But if you give someone a book, it's an, a valuable object and, um, Dave Narciso, my drummer from Throwing Muses again, yeah. is a, an amazing graphic designer. So he puts it together as a package with my images and my writing. And it's not, it can fill in some blanks if you are, say, not musically literate or if you're not fluent in that language. But it's just sort of uh, alongside the music. It doesn't explain it. I see. It's just a nice presentation. And as a product, it is valuable. And I'm sleazy enough to slip. <laughs> CDs into it and say, here, adopt my religion. No, that, that seems great. And, and to experience it, you can listen to the music and read read the uh, anecdotes from I each. guess, yeah. yeah. I, I can't do anything when music is playing but stare into space. But I, however you want to do it, yeah. I guess. <laughs> and are all the, the stories true? In Everything the I do is true. I'm not capable of making yeah. anything up. Okay. Every lyric. <laughs> my drummer from 50 Foot Wave says, when they find out that you didn't, create any of this. No one's going to like you anymore. <laughs> You're not creative at all. You just copied stuff down. <laughs> That's so not true. Um, <laughs> um, and you, I, I read that you created some new inter- instruments while working on this record. Is that right? That's a nice way of saying I broke instruments and taped them to each other <laughs> okay. and made horrifying Frankenstein monsters. <laughs> but I wanted to hear things I'd never heard before, which I had always done by sure. slowing down tracks or um, layering them. And, but it's that's a nuanced kind of production that, that doesn't always uh, help um, tickle somebody's ear. And so these instruments were definitely things I had never heard before, as well as the field recordings, which oh yeah, they sort of mimicked the the room mic, which is the mic in the corner that allows someone to feel that they're in the room, no matter what instrument is being recorded. You say, oh, that there isn't enough atmosphere, so let's bring the person into the room. And this was an extension of the room into planet Earth. So I see. maybe you haven't sat in on somebody talking about Bigfoot breaking into our house. Maybe you haven't heard Australian birds, but they are akin to your biology, both of those elements, you know, so it's going to be idiosyncratic enough to grab your attention and yet not alienate you. That makes sense. Well, it does make sense. I don't know if it's true. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's the logic. (laughs) (laughs) Did you take the photographs? I did, yeah. Wow. So so you're working in quite a few different mediums. Is there a medium that you haven't explored that you like to try besides photography and... Tap. Tap. I think the next album should yes, come along just with... just only tap, the sound tap. of tap shoes. I like it. Yeah. Did, click, 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 click. <laughs> Did you capture any coyote sounds for the record? Uh, there, there were coyotes living at my farmhouse, too, okay. out in the field. So they're on um, tracks that have, like, Canada geese and the sound of snow. And 
I see. Really, I'm just spiraling up into the ether at this point. <laughs> 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 the art ether. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, you have so many albums that you've put out over the years. Is there any that you'd like to, at some point, perform in its entirety? That seems to be a thing that, that is going on quite a bit now, where bands will come back and they'll play an album in there in its entirety. Is there? <laughs> can you think of one that... No. No? There's okay. always some horrible mistake you made <laughs> that you don't want repeated or heard ever again. <laughs> Including songs that make me like vomit, you know. <laughs> so, <no. laughs> All right. I want to ask you about your Twitter account because um, I love your Twitter account Aww. and um, y- there's so many insightful comments on it. And uh, I, I was looking through it and I saw dogs riding skateboards, um, which I cannot get enough of that personally. Um, I also saw... That's no water skiing squirrel. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Um, but you you had posted a photo today uh, with uh, a beer and some pie that uh, showed up in your hotel room. Yes, nice. yes, good old Seattle. Yeah, yeah, we like to uh, always a homecoming. Make sure you have the pie uh, had my name on it. <laughs> Did it really? I've never had a pie with my name on it. I nice. think nice. It's like, yeah, you also um, back in October um, sent uh, posted. You said you te- a text from your beloved KXP. I have confirmed that you can say dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just sang dumbass because you guys confirmed it. Nice. I could. <laughs> okay. That was what that was about. I wasn't quite sure. I only cared about KXP. I was like, it's okay if nobody else plays it, but they have to. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay to say dumbass on the air. Wonderful. Let's say it a lot. I know. I'm going to just say it all the time now. Dumbass. Um, Kristen Hurst live at KEXP. So great to have you here. Um, do you have a couple more songs for us? Oh, sure. You paint your own TV on the wall. Carve out insects to feed us all. Life catch by and the past world echoes your thoughts Your compass led you to the edge of a lake You send your nuts down there if you take Such bad advice from the love gods of hate You get cold, you get burned, you get cold You get burned, you get cold
suburban desert A fast food hike We swipe at peeling paint Swat away flies The crawling milk fed Squawking cream filled The hominids To drive into the dirt No lust, no glutton, eh We're free as algae In a suburban desert A fast food hike We swipe at peeling paint Swat away Broken flame to broken walls to sunburn snarl the rushing and parched a singular our desire to drive into the dirt. No loss, no gladden ache. We're free as algae. Those with an all-consuming passion. Kristen Hirsch live on KEXP. Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you. Love, love, love to hear you, you play live. And uh, playing tonight at the Triple Door and also tomorrow night at Mississippi Studios in Portland, kicking off your U.S. tour. You That's were, right. I'm you, kicking it off. Kicking it off right here. Thank <laughs> you for coming to Seattle and kicking it off. You, you've just been in the U.K. and uh, Ireland? Yeah, that? yeah. Nice. I got a little bit of London fog in my throat. Sorry oh, yeah. about that. Uh, no, no, no. I not it's noticed. Foggy in there. <laughs> <laughs> what can we expect from the show tonight? Are you uh do you do do you read from the book as well as play? I do whatever I feel like. Nice. Is that bad? No, that's great. No, really? Okay. That's I that's ideal. I, I could play fifty foot wave muses, Appalachian folk songs. I nice. play I read from all my books. I don't know. Awesome. I'd play a song and it reminds me of a story and that reminds me of a song and then it's time to go. I love it. I love it. Ah, really? Um, and you wrote a book uh, not long ago about Vic Chestnut. Is that right? Yeah, I read from that too sometimes. Nice. It's like... I, uh, I saw him in Seattle back in the 90s, and it was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Really? Uh, yeah, so good. How nice. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out with a Vic Chestnut song <gasps> today. So Lovely. Um, but uh, thank you so much for coming in. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Um, Always a pleasure. KEXP is family. Thank you. The new album is called Wyatt at Coyote Palace, and uh, it comes. it's a two-CD set. It comes with a book. Pick it up now. Uh, also, you put out a 50-foot wave uh, EP called Bath White earlier this year. And you're working on a new th Throwing Muses album, I understand. Yeah, I'm technically in L.A. right now making a Muses hack. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> it is. Um, well, um, we look forward to that as well. Thank you for coming in. You're listening to 90.3 KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.